welcome to the Saving with Steve show, where we talk about the ins and outs of money. Pretty much everything on the sun relates to you having a happier, healthier relationship with money. My name is Steve Sex, and I want to thank you for joining us. Again, thank you for sharing with your friends and family. We're well over 600,000 listeners here. We've just expanded overseas. We've got another 80, 90,000 listeners in 54 countries, and that keeps growing. So we're very thankful for you sharing us with your friends and family. We've got one heck of a show, but you want to th think about this. Last week, we had Howard Jarvis. Uh, he wrote the book, Understandable Economics. And it's some great information. If you want to check that out, you can always go to savingwithsteve.us, the website. You can go take a look at episode 111, and you can get all the information. There's beside, behind the scenes stuff, guest gifts, the whole shot. Now, today, I'll be talking about how to refresh your budget in, in the new year. But you know what? Let's just start out by saying this. Um, you know what? Author Jarl Jensen uh, indicates crypto technology is on a very sound footing. Even with all that you've heard, people may not realize that it's become essential to the way our economy works. The economy can now grow and expand when inflation is under control because of the value created by crypto. It may even be possible to grow the economy without the stock market and real estate valuations becoming overvalued. In other words, cryptocurrencies and technologies are likely to become the main wealth creating mechanism in the near future and the midterm future. So that's an interesting statement. We're going to unpack that today to let you know a little bit about Gerald Jensen. Um, like I said, he's the author of The Big Solution, Deactivating the Ticking Time Bomb of Today's Economy. You can take a look at that book cover. It's a very cool book cover. He's actually the founder and president of Aventagen, a company creating silver research and development solutions for organizations across the globe. Uh, Jensen holds uh, passions, uh, patents for medical technologies in reach, which have reached over a billion dollars in sales. He's the founder of Euromed, a company he sold in 2016. He's actually written five books about the economy and its relationship with society. So, Jarl, welcome to the show. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. Um, great, great introduction. Um, yeah, the reason why I started writing books about uh, economics is that um, I've spent my time developing products and businesses and um, always looked at, as an engineer, looked at a problem solving perhaps in a different way than most other people, and uh, especially econom economists. Um, so uh, the idea that or the epiphany that I had that the economy works wrong, our financial system works wrong, was based on engineering principles. Um, and the idea is that it is much better to engineer something. In fact, it's the only way we do anything right, right? We, we know that when we build a bridge, it's going to be around for 100 years, 200 years or more. Uh, buildings. Uh, we are really good at engineering things. It's how we've come so far. Uh, it's how technology keeps advancing. It's engineering that's applied or applied sciences. In economics, that's not what's going on. We don't use engineering principles. We, we, we use economic philosophies. They are, in, in fact, not, it's not scientific at all. And it is costing us tremendously. The inefficiencies in our economy are devastating. Uh, you know, the number of people dying from poverty, the problems we can't solve from climate change to, you know, pollution in the waters. And uh, there's just so many problems that we could just spend the rest of the show talking about our problems. So the real problem, though, is we can't solve our problems because of how our financial system works. If we applied engineering principles to how uh, money is uh, used and controlled, we could actually relatively simply solve these big problems. So anyway, um, the reason why that has got something to do with crypto is that once you take a look back and say, hey, wait a minute, this is how the system really works and this is how it should work, you can look at crypto and say, oh, it actually has a pretty unique function at this point. And then you can actually say, well, we, we can actually use that to our gain now because if we understand how, because if you listen to other crypto experts, they come up with all kinds of bizarre reasons why they're valued and why they work. And it actually doesn't make a whole lot of sense if you're honest with yourself. 
But that doesn't mean that crypto isn't actually functioning in some way in society at this point, because it is. Uh, even at this point, when it's lost you know, 95 to 99% of its value, the function is obvious that all of those people that were made millionaires uh, during the pandemic all of a sudden lost all their wealth and now they got to go back to work, which is exactly a useful outcome in cryptocurrency. Now, stock markets have collapsed significantly. Real estate is on the verge of collapse as well. Uh, but cryptocurrency is very sensitive to what the Federal Reserve wants. In other words, it's doing exactly what the Federal Reserve wants. And so for the financial system, it is actually providing a huge service. In other words, our current financial system, banking system and the Federal Reserve would be on the verge of collapse if it wasn't for cryptocurrencies. So in this sense, cryptocurrencies is essential to how our economy works now. And I actually believe that cryptocurrencies wasn't made by some you know, hacker from Japan. It was actually made by the, crypt, uh, by the Federal Reserve and the central banks because they need something like this in order to prevent real estate from being super overvalued. Like, I mean, at what point do you say that a one bedroom apartment in New York City isn't worth $2 million uh, <laughs> when you can barely you know, turn around uh, and make eggs on the stove next to the fridge because you know, there's, there's just no room? Uh, it, it's just, in other words, $2 million in a one bedroom apartment it doesn't make sense, but it, it makes sense when you can get you know, very low interest loans and there's nothing else available and so on. At one point, is a stock not worth you know, 100 times earnings, 200 times earnings, or not profitable at all? At what point is it just completely irrational? We certainly saw uh, at, at the height of the recent boom during the pandemic that valuations no, man, no longer mattered. What matters is that there was so much cash, it had to go somewhere. So mm -hmm. it just meant buy everything and anything, and it's going to go up. And that's pretty much what happened. But you see the disconnect here is that there's no rationale. So what was interesting about cryptocurrency is that the rationale for the valuation, there isn't one. In other words, stocks are tied to profits usually or future earnings. And real estate is usually tied to location, demand, that kind of thing. Cryptocurrency isn't tied to reality. It is simply tied to uh, uh, shortages or, or, or uh, there's, there's not enough of them trading. So that causes a, a, a demand for them and that causes the price to go up in general. Um, so in the long term, if we look at cryptocurrency as serving a function in the economy, once uh, inflation is tamed, which looks like we're almost there, uh, then well, what is the rationale for um, assets to go up in value? Well, all of a sudden, cryptocurrencies have a better rationale than assets that are already overpriced. So what does that mean? Well, it means that at some point, the Federal Reserve is going to turn on the spigots and uh, start printing money and get money back into circulation. And now the question is, what is the best, best mechanism for creating wealth? And if you look at the overvalued uh, assets uh, as stocks and real estate, you say, well, it's not even something you think or say or anybody, it's just the way, the way uh, cryptocurrencies work, they create automatic shortages uh, because of something called staking. When you stake your cryptocurrencies, they essentially are not tradable. When they are not tradable, that creates shortages. And by staking, you are rewarded with something similar to an interest. But it's actually called mining, and it produces more uh, currency so that you get rewarded for staking, in essence, creating shortages. And although all assets are based on trading and value, the when when <clears throat> there isn't when the demand is greater than the supply then the stock goes up cryptocurrencies baked into the algorithm and the exchanges and all that is a uh, algorithmic shortage uh, so there is not enough supply in the, in the exchanges to meet the demand and so in the long term you have this new type of asset wealth creation 
built into cryptocurrencies that is unlike any other asset. Gold, what can you do with gold, right? It's, it's sitting in, in vaults doing nothing. Uh, you, you Stocks certainly are very interesting. And I, I still think that if you pick the right stocks, uh, that that's you know, obviously going to be a winner because sometimes stocks are, are really, uh, you know, uh, really creating a tremendous amount of wealth. Uh, but again, which stocks? But in general now, if according to me and, and the way I look at the world, the mechanism or the place where the most wealth will be created in the future um, because inflation will be tamed and deflation is going to be the problem eventually because technology keeps getting better, automation keeps getting better, deflationary pressures in the economy are significant. And it doesn't hurt when Biden says that 30,000 people, uh, immigrants from around from every country around the world is welcome into the country. That also creates a tremendous amount of deflation. Immigration is great to tame inflation. And I'm sure that's why he's a uh, He's doing that because we need more labor in the United States. Um, so anyway, there are tremendous deflationary pr pressures in the economy. The, uh, the episode caused by the pandemic is a little unusual event, obviously, when everybody is told to shelter in place and not work for a month on end and getting free checks mm -hmm. from the government. Yeah, that's going to create a problem with and inflation. But that's not really the norm for our economy. Our economy is normally working uh, in such a way that uh, it's hard to get a job. There is a large pool of unemployed people uh, usually available. Um, so we're, we're, we're pretty quickly going to get back to normal. And once we do, you're going to see cryptocurrency uh, start going back up in value. Now, all the people out there, I know some people in Congress are saying we should abolish Hey, uh, Yarrell, I'm going to, I'm going to, uh, and, uh, you know, Yarrell, I, I need to take yeah, a break. Ahead. This is, this is very interesting. I just, I need to take a break so we can pay some bills. So, Hey, everybody stick with us. We'll be right back with more Yarrell Jensen and we're talking cryptocurrency, uh, and, uh, stick with us. We'll be back in just a few moments. Okay. Hey, Cameron, we just finished, uh, segment number one. We'll be moving into segment number two with Yarrell Jensen and, um, we'll be starting in about four seconds. I love commercial breaks in an unedited world. <laughs> hey, welcome back to the saving. Hey, here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. Hey, welcome back to the Saving with Steve show where we talk about the ins and outs of money. We've been talking with Yarl Jensen. He's been talking about cryptocurrency, his new book, The Big Solution, uh, Deactivating the tick Ticking Time Palm of Today's Economy. And he just spent about 10 minutes walking us through this um, economy that we're in, the place for cryptocurrency, how it can help people build wealth. Um, but I got a couple of questions. So, girl, here's here's a big question. You know what? Lately, we have seen a number of people who've managed these exchanges come out and say they were doing stuff in nefarious. And obviously that's had a big issue with the environment. And typically when you have a downturn in the economy, those seem thing to pop up, all the Ponzi schemes, all that kind of stuff. And that hasn't been beneficial for the crypto marketplace. Um, but in the same token, we were starting hearing some of the talking heads saying, hey, you know what? Stay away from crypto and all that kind of stuff. Uh, I think it's uh, important to, if you could take another moment and help people understand you know what, a um, little simpler, how that fits in this world and how they can actually profit from that. And I know you talked about the staking and the mining and go into a little more detail on that, if you would. Well, I mean, um, yeah, there, there's obviously plenty of people who are, you know, ditching crypto, you know, they've lost 99% of the value. Um, but that's from a personal perspective. And also I know, I know the people who, are, who got into trading crypto, who are normally trading stocks, they probably should never have gotten into crypto because they really fundamentally did not understand what the idea was. Uh, and, and, and perhaps nobody did. But, and this is why I think fundamentally this is a central bank or federal reserve driven concept. Uh, because it is a very efficient mechanism 
for generating wealth, but also from taking away wealth when necessary. Uh, and, and so it's not for the, not like you want to give money to somebody without guarantees or, you know, these, uh, FTX, uh, blow ups. Uh, and there's also, uh, uh, people who, uh, whose accounts get hacked and all of a sudden their crypto is just gone. Uh, and this can happen. So, uh, I, I, my, my advice, uh, is that no, don't get one of these cold vaults or well, I'm sorry, wallets, uh, or don't, uh, put your own crypto code, whatever, on and, and open. The reason is that people can steal your code, people can hack your code, and then get in there, and that money goes away. And you, you just there's no tracking it, or it's very difficult to track, uh, and it's very easy for people to um, basically steal it once they have access to your code. And it's a very complicated uh, process. So what has has developed over the the recent years are these um, uh, white glove services like Coinbase uh, and Kraken. Uh, FTX was one, but it was illegitimate, right? Uh, I think Coinbase is legitimate. It's pu publicly traded. Um, I personally don't use Coinbase because I don't think it has advanced its capabilities enough to where it wants to be. In other words, you want to use a service where staking is easy. And so my conclusion and, and where, I, uh, where I purchase my, my uh, um, uh, cryptocurrency is in Kraken, where I can you know, buy and trade currencies uh, very easily and I can stake it very easily, instantly. Uh, and, and when you stake it, you start collecting interest uh, from anywhere from five to 10 to even 20% interest. Uh, and and you know, those kinds of interest rates even in today's higher interest rate world, <laughs> it's pretty interesting or attractive. Now there's mechanisms behind it and they, you know, the algorithms that control how much of the currency is actually in circulation, you know, varies between currencies. So it's interesting if that in a sense is just like uh, studying stocks, you understand. Uh, and there's a difference between um, how you stake the currencies too. There's proof of work and there is uh, a proof of staking. Uh, proof of staking, I think, is the future because it's super efficient, 99% more efficient than proof of work. Um, and because it's more efficient, that means it's easier to trade, it's easier to buy items with it uh, because when it's proof of work, uh, the algorithms are much slower. Uh, so things, uh, so what does that mean? That means like, Bitcoin, you know, is kind of like the first social media service no longer exists, right? These more advanced coins are probably the future. I think Cardano being proof of stake uh, is, is a very solid uh, cryptocurrency and has a lot of future in it. Um, but there's a tons of uh, different ones. And obviously you want to stay close to um, the more popular ones. Uh, but um most important thing, I believe, if you want to get into it and if you're not used to it, is picking a white glove service that's legitimate uh, and then having the ability to easily stake the currency, and that is Kraken. Coinbase is also good. I also think Robinhood has uh, services, uh, cryptocurrency services, but again, their capabilities need to evolve. I know they're developing staking capabilities, but I don't think they're there yet. Uh, so anyway, it's still a, a pretty a young, um, you know, and, and, and the pricing we're seeing right now um, is very low. Uh, and, you know, it's, it's hard to imagine that these cryptocurrencies are going to go back to the highs and then they're just going to keep going. And the reason is that there is no logic to their valuation. There is only supply and demand. And the algorithm is created to have a supply problem. And if, well, if you don't have enough supply to meet demand, what are you going to get? You're going to get higher prices. It's algorithmically creating wealth. Meanwhile, the Federal Reserve increases interest rates and boom, these things crash. But that's exactly how the banking system wants it to work. 
-hmm. So in that sense, it has a real legitimate function in the economy now. And uh, I don't believe it's going anywhere. So here's a, here's a question. You know what? We've seen um, bad players in the marketplace. You know, uh, it, it has, has there been legislation come out um, more highly regulating cryptocurrency in the marketplace? Yeah, yeah. What do I think of uh, regulating cryptocurrency? Yeah. I mean, I think it's fine. I mean, there's no reason why, you know, what happened inside FTX should happen. And regulation just says, hey, you know, don't trade something you don't own. I mean, that's basically what, um, you know, they did at FTX. They basically sold something or people would put their money into their, uh, you know, their white glove service. And then they would just use it to buy other things, basically using other people's money to fund the, uh, the Democratic Party and the politicians and, you know, uh, he, this guy, this guy so it was wanted basically, to, uh, you know, their, their whole thing see. was a, a Ponzi and, and that's just the way it rolled. Um, so, okay. Um, I, I was yeah. thinking if there was, um, cause you talked about how in cer certain services, people could have their stuff hacked and stuff like that. I figured if there's more regulation to protect people, it would create a little more stability within pricing. But again, you're talking that it's an algorithm designed supply and demand function. Yeah, it's, it's not, regulation isn't going to help people who are um, cold storage, uh, storing their, their cryptocurrency in these, uh, you know, uh, crypto vaults. Uh, it's not going to help them because if they lose their password, that money's gone. By the way, there's like, you know, billions of dollars lost in crypto because people have lost their passwords. Uh, so, you know, you, you think these passwords are not, you know, four digits, uh, like on your iPhone or something, these are complicated you know, things. And then the thing is, okay, so if you've got thousands of dollars in there, where do you put this thing? It's like, all right, so now you need a, a vault, a little vault, and you put it in there. But then if you're explaining what's on that piece of paper and somebody cracks into your vault, well, the money is still gone. Uh, so I, I like white, white glove services because, hey, they're going to take responsibility, just like putting your money in a bank. Why not, you know, the difference between putting money into a white glove service like Kraken or Coinbase is, is that they're literally responsible for the currency now. If you put it into your own crypto vault, it's your responsibility. And if you mess it up, lose the password or something, you're not getting your money back. Uh, the white services, you don't have these problems. And, and honestly, who really has time to uh, look at the real intricate comp complexity of these things? What we want to do is be able to invest in an asset, mm -hmm. let it sit there, work for you, and, and you get wealthy. And all I'm suggesting uh, to the, your listeners is that it is very likely that the greatest wealth creation going forward, after we get rid of this little bump of uh, inflation, is actually cryptocurrency. The one thing that everybody's running away from right now is going to be the place that most wealth is created going forward. Because even after we've seen the stock market crash, I don't know where we are now, 35% down, and real estate has gone down a little bit, but not that much. These assets are actually overvalued. Gold, I would say, is also overvalued. How, how can you pay $2,000 for an ounce? I mean, it's, gold is it's just a piece of metal. It's just sitting there. Uh, you mm -hmm. know, it's not, It doesn't do anything. Cryptocurrency is very different this way. It's literally a mechanism for, for wealth generation. You just, you know, you just got to understand when to own it and when not to own it. I mean, really, if you, if you listen to what central banks say, are saying is that, guys, there's inflation. Hey, <laughs> cryptocurrency, get out. So, you know, that's it. That's, it's, it's pretty simple. Yarl, I want to thank you for joining us today. This has been wonderful. I mean, big time learning experience for me, especially all of our, 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 uh, our listeners, whether in the States or worldwide. So we appreciate that. Um, you know what? If you're looking to uh, get a hold of Yarl Jensen's book, The Big Solution, Deactivating the Ticking Time Bomb of Today's Economy, you can see it on the screen there. Go to Amazon, 4.5 stars, lots of wonderful reviews. Um, and, uh, you know what, you want to check that out. So Yara, again, I want to thank you for joining us. I hope you have a wonderful day. Stay safe and, uh, uh, and warm up there. <laughs> All righty. Thanks for having me. Uh, thank you. Cameron, I'm doing my little segment.
here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. Hey, welcome back to the Saving with Steve show where we talk about the ins and outs of money. And I, again, I want to say I appreciate you sharing with your friends and family. All the replays are available at www.savingwithsteve.us. If you're enjoying the stories of helpful information and insight on Saving with Steve, hey, then I encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel our Spotify channel, our Google Play channel, and check out a few of our affiliates at UK Health Radio, BBS Radio, Talk Radio New York City, and many others. All these networks are dedicated to empowering you to live a life of, of financial and personal freedom. Again, you can follow us on Facebook at Saving with Steve Sexton. Uh, you know, there's Insiders Club, behind the uh, behind the scenes stuff there. You'll really get a, 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 a good look at it. Now, what I'd like to tell you is talk about how to refresh your budget for the new year. Okay, everybody has a budget. They probably haven't watched it for three or four months, but here's the first step. You know what? Take a look at your budget. In fact, put your budget aside and see where you actually are right now. And what I mean by that is write down all your expenses from the last three months. Okay, everything that you um, and break it down to things like, hey, I'm buying food for the house. I'm buying food out. I'm uh, I'm buying dinner out. I'm buying coffee or things like that out, okay? Break those down. Hey, how much are you spending on delivery services, food services, wineries? Um, are you spending money on apps for working out or something else, okay? And then, hey, what about your streaming services? How many do you have? Um, break it down the car insurance, the home insurance, every little expense you have, utilities, the whole shot, Okay. Understand exactly what you're spending. Calculate in, hey, if I got to pay insurances for car, the home, property taxes, the whole shot, okay? Once you get those all looked at, start looking at each one of those expenses. If you're not using it on a consistent basis, hey, consider getting rid of it, okay? Look at things like, hey, I have cable, but now I want to, uh, you know, I, 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 I can go to a live TV service with getting a few... Uh, streaming channels like the Netflix, the Hulus, or whatever. And can you reduce your cost? We reduce our cost by $100 a month here. We started looking at our, you know, our, 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 our phone bills. You have four or five major carriers, AT&T, Verizon, you know, all those. And you want to take a look at how much you're paying and say, what if I went to another carrier that has same network, 5G, the whole shot, has the same phones, that could put you in a position where you don't have to pay as much and you're not stuck for two years or you don't have to buy a phone if you don't want to. So take a look at those things. Every little bit counts. You know what? You might be going to the Starbucks or your local, you know what, uh, coffee place to buy coffee at five and six dollars a cup. You know what? Hey, there's nothing wrong with walking into, you know, Costco and buying a curd, uh, curd uh, container, a pop top container of over 100 of them. Hey, you can cover your coffee for three months if you do a cup a day and it only costs you about 12 cents as opposed to four bucks. A lot of savings right there. Hey, looking at what you eat at the store, prepackaged items are more expensive than making it on your own. Take a look at that. There are alternatives to buying steak at eight and nine dollars a pound. You could be buying pork chop or chicken. Okay, you could be buying eggs. There's a lot of ways to escape this. But if you start looking at everything that you're paying for, you can find ways to reduce it. Once you do, set that up as your template for your budget. Okay, set it up for your template for your budget. And then stick to that. Set a dashboard. Hey, where am I at this month? Next month. And just keep a track on it so you can refresh your budget because you're going to need to do that because everything's still going up. Yes, you know what? Inflation went down to 7.1. Last year is 8.6. Now it's 7.1. Hey, the only thing that went down is you used cars and truck sales. That's because in the cost of getting a loan is so much higher. It used to be one or zero. Now it's seven. So yeah, that's, you can see that gas and oil has gone down a little bit and it's starting to creep back up. Here we go. We're still seeing inflation, which means you have to take steps to a little eliminate what you're expending. And the big key here is to find a way to do the things that you love to do, but for less. Get rid of those apps you don't need. Get rid of the streaming sites you don't need. Get rid of anything on your balance sheet that you don't use, okay? Next, Look at a debt plan. You know, as interest rates rise, credit card interest goes up, 
It's going to get more expensive. It's going to put a nitriter noose around your neck when it comes to debt. List all those debts, smallest to largest. I like smallest to largest. Interest rate, payment date, minimum payment. Hey, make the minimum payment on everything except for the one you want to pay off and pay as much as you can. Once you pay that off, the total amount you're paying there, add it to the minimum payment on the next one, and so on and so on until you got them all paid off. Folks, it's always better to earn an interest than pay an interest. Hey, I want to thank you for joining us here on Saving with Steve. This is a great time to refresh your budget, okay? Find ways to reduce and eliminate costs, but keep doing the same thing. Get yourself prepared for inflation and get rid of that debt so you can have a more fruitful year. I want to thank you for joining us here on Saving with Steve. We're going to give you our best advice. We're going to look forward to seeing you next week. we got wonderful guests. We'll see you then. Bye-bye.